Well, hello everybody. Good afternoon. Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Charlotte Products in Canada. Thanks for joining us today on our webinar. Continue our series uh, since uh, we have since the March the 13th of 2020. Uh, we certainly appreciate your involvement and ongoing support and uh, and questions submitted. Uh, obviously, uh, COVID uh, uh, is still, whether we're in the third wave or second wave or fourth wave, depending on the country. I mean, words such as stay at home and vaccines and switching to virtual, you know, uh, are, are certainly common uh, terms these days. Uh, some are fast approaching. We're not quite sure if we'll be allowed out uh, with stay-at-home orders and all of those kinds of things. Some provinces, some states are closing, some are opening. Uh, it's a whirlwind without question, so that's one of the reasons why we continue to transfer the knowledge to each and every one of you, so in hopes of lowering the risk of an outbreak and, and protecting yourselves and, uh, and also your loved ones. So um, today's topic is cleaning and disinfecting and disinfecting there is a right way and a wrong way and our lines have been lit up over the last several months on what is the right way what is the wrong way um, you know is it true we have to read the label and follow all of those instructions and things like that so we'll put some clarity on that today uh, as we go along so may the 12th already um, you know summer first long weekend of the year is fast approaching so let's get uh, right at it here and away we'll go so okay so learning and continuous change we talked about this a little bit on the last webinar there, but I mean, obviously COVID is worldwide. Uh, we've all got new learnings here. We've all got a better idea of the awareness and the risk involved, um, you know, and the good thing really about it, if there is light at the end of the tunnel, I mean, there's a rising importance of our industry and what we actually do. And that is promoting clean and safe and healthy environments for everybody. And, and believe me, that's a good thing. The switch to virtual business models and uh, and working and staying at home, uh, I mean, that's been the probably one of the largest learning curves for people and businesses alike there. How do they stay profitable? How do they continue to service their customers at those exceptional levels? Well, really their workforce is scattered at home and, and doing virtual meetings and things like that. So in the last year, we're, we're getting a little bit more comfortable there. And, uh, but, but really that's probably the way that we're going to continue to modify and do those types of things so that's learn that's continuous change and things like that personal protection at home and at work I mean obviously employee wellness is key without employee wellness I mean you're not going to have a business without doubt so why should I clean why should I sanitize why should I disinfect just for that one particular reason alone business survival I mean it's uh, it, you've got to be fairly reinventive today and adaptive to everything that goes on there we have to continue to learn how to do that. Um, that rise in importance of our our cleaning and custodial industry is worth mentioning the second time because really it is key and and really we're long overdue for revisiting that. Our cleaning standards need to improve. They have improved. And really, we've talked about in some previous webinars the importance of quality-based cleaning versus price-based cleaning. And that's good for building service contractors and businesses, employees, and occupants and visitors to your buildings for sure. So we'll continue to learn as we go along. So some of the most popular inquiries are really the delivery methods. You know, since uh, March of 2020, I mean, we didn't have uh, really electrostatic sprayers. We didn't have a lot of pump up sprayers. We didn't have foggers and misters as a general rule, or if they were there, they were certainly not promoted as such in any sales and marketing strategies there. But since, um, COVID's come about, I mean, there is uh, less money to spend, there is reduced labor, and you really need to find efficiencies to clean and disinfect and sanitize those surfaces, and even in higher frequencies than you had previously there. So there is a good reason why these exist, these, these devices, and we call them delivery methods there, but they are not the end all to everything. There is still, there, there's a very serious side effect here and if you use one of these delivery methods in the wrong way, not following the five critical elements of disinfectant security, you will fail. And we, quite honestly, we can't afford to say, fail these days, you know. Um, so it doesn't matter what the delivery method is. It's really, what does the label say? So every single disinfectant that you have, and I have one right in front of us. This is our number one selling ES-15. 
Okay, all of this lettering, all of this text, all of this instructions, they are all here for a particular reason. Okay, if you follow this, you will pass. If you do not follow this, you will fail. And it doesn't matter, this trigger sprayer could be called a delivery method, as a matter of fact. Not as high tech as a fogger or an ES sprayer or mister or whatever it may be, but this is a delivery method. If you don't apply the product according to these instructions, you will fail. Okay, a typical word that's said is the micron particle size, you know, and that's really, they range from about 40 to 110 microns, these delivery methods, right? The smaller the micron, the faster it dries, and what the faster something dries, that you will maybe not have that, achieve that dwell time, because again, on the label, if it says it has to stay moist on a surface for one minute or two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, it doesn't matter, the smaller the particle, the faster it will dry you probably will not achieve your your desired dwell time and therefore you will you will be actually failing okay the other side the larger the micron the more moisture the wetter it is and that's uh, more sensitive to electronics and things like that so it's a fine balance and it really doesn't matter what method you use as long as you're respecting all of the rules on the label Okay, here are some examples, and this is where really the seriousness of the situation comes in here is because people really, uh, there is a lack of education in the industry. And if I look at one particular uh, Fogger uh, company, or Mr. Company, that, that uh, in their guidebook alone, and we, we, we're not putting any names down here because we don't want to, you know, really uh, slander any, any particular brand whatsoever. But I mean, in their instructions, and this is an example of improper guidance, I mean, the instructions indicate that in an office environment, you should do, use a device for 40 to 50 or 40 to 45 microns. OK, I don't have an issue with that. But where I have the issue is in the instructions in the guidebook. It says that 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 will give them a, a dwell time of four minutes. And I have no idea how they could actually say that, because if you say four minutes, and we have two of us using the same device, if I go a little faster than you, then I'm not gonna have as moist of a surface and I'm not probably gonna achieve the, the four minutes. If you're a little slower than me or vice versa, you can see the outcome is totally different. So be very careful we have clocks and stopwatches for a reason go into a room you know validate your procedures and things and go at a, a constant pay, uh, pace and then time it and then you'll be able to educate your custodial staff like that okay so so really that's one particular method there that uh, it is subject to error without question okay another one there is is uh, the electrostatic sprayers great device uh, positive and electric charges uh, you know, it allows the chemistry to cling to certain surfaces underneath uh, desks and, and in hard to get areas and things like that. But the same thing happens, right? You cannot go into a room and just fog or spray everything going, including drapery and windows and desks and under desks and chairs and things like that without following again the rules and the instructions on the disinfectant label. If you are doing anything other than following those five critical elements, you are failing. And in this day and age with all of our illness and deaths and things like that, loss of life, we can't afford to fail, okay? So you'll see videos going through where an operator's just going in and fogging everything, including the plants and the kitchen counter and the stove and the fridge and, and all of those, the produce areas and things like that. You cannot do that again unless you follow the label instructions, okay? Which is all about pre-cleaning and respecting dwell time and dilution and things like that. So. A word of caution, uh, you know, around these delivery advice, devices. Drones, I mean, these things flying through the air, uh, we did mention it on a previous webinar about these where, uh, you know, you just cannot go through a stadium or a building and spraying uh, disinfectants through the air without, again, following the five critical elements, okay? You just can't do it. A drone can apply, there's no question, okay, but they can't pre-clean. Imagine a farmer's field, if they're spraying an insecticide, some sort of treatment to you know to fertilize or whatever if they had instructions where they had to first plow the field and then they had to you know uh, you know mix it a certain way and make sure it stays moist for a certain that you couldn't you couldn't do it as well either okay so drones just really aren't the thing my favorite obviously is uh, is uh, our pump up sprayer uh, it seems to one be the one that's the most effective it's very easy it is far superior to using something with a trigger head it's far 
faster, it's more ergonomic and things, and you're really getting a nice amount in there for relatively no investment whatsoever. Once you put this in the hand of your custodial staff and your janitors, they will actually really appreciate it there because it's uh, it helps them help uh, you know achieve the cleaning objectives of the actual facility there. So faster method, more labor intensive and things like that. So that's a little bit on uh, some of the delivery methods uh, that we've talked about. The second, our second most popular inquiry here is how to properly clean and disinfect it and ensure proper protection. And that is a big question. How do we ensure that we clean? We get a lot of questions on, do I really have to do everything that's on that particular label? Do I really have to let it sit like that for that long and things like that? Yes, you do. These questions continuously come in. So number one is the delivery methods number two is how do I properly clean and that's where we're going to get to the fun here today uh, go through the five critical elements here uh, first but I mean it, as a reminder these are what you need to follow and if you want to pass this is what you need to do so number one using a registered product okay reading and understanding the label and what's interesting is in our questions today we are getting more uh, it's very popular saying geez I didn't know it did that or I didn't know I had to use it that way for years people really haven't read and understood the label now they're actually paying attention and what you really need to know too is on some of these labels you'll have a secondary uh, uh, label we call it uh, I forget what we call it there but uh, uh, but anyway more information uh, below some of the claims that are underneath the multi languages and things like that so it's a it's a two-part uh, label as a matter of fact so just be aware of that there's more instructions there obviously diluting properly okay We've talked about PPM before. We're going to talk about it at the end of this show when we're doing a, a few live demos for you there, but you really need to make sure it's diluted properly. If you're mixing something stronger than what it states on the label, you are not achieving anything other than wasting money and two, maybe causing some uh, uh, irritancies to some worker's skin or eyes or respiratory or something like that. You know, so there's no advantage whatsoever. It will kill 100% of what it says it's going to kill on the label. Okay, pre-cleaning surfaces. This is where you, all the commercials, this is where I talk about the electrostatic sprayers, they go on and they just show fogging and spraying and things like that and they haven't pre-cleaned surfaces or at least they haven't deter indicated it in the videos that I've seen and that is a failure removing gross filth and debris and contaminants so the disinfectant can come in pure contact with an uncontaminated surface to allow it to do its job that's what number three is about number four respecting the dwell time regardless of what it says on the label okay regardless of what everybody has or whatever if it says it on the label it's 60 seconds or two minutes or five minutes it must be that time or you fail Okay, and then when you're in contact with food surfaces uh, or or children mouthing, teething, things like that, uh, we always recommend a potable water rinse. And once again, that will actually be on the label. So if you follow those five things, you will pass. And that's what we need everybody to do. Okay, and just quickly before we get into our demos here, here's some sustainable thoughts for cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. When I go to pre-clean, okay, do I need to use a registered disinfectant? Well, well, there's two answers. Uh, yes, if infection control officers in your facility dictate that, you must do it. And if not, you can use a safer, uh, good quality general purpose cleaner there to actually do that. Number one, the cost is dramatically less. Two, the detergency level is higher because detergents and cleaners are designed on detergency and removing soils as opposed to killing um, you know, microbes and bacteria and virus and things like that you'll have less risk of uh irritancies and whether it's skin or respiratory or eyes you know you, it's it's less expensive like I said there higher dilutions you know without without question a lot of disinfectants will have a 1 to 12 1 to 20 1 to 64 dilution where these general purpose cleaners will be 1 to 128 1 to 256 so the higher the dilution the less cost less uh, plastic in the landfill and the cleaning performance overall it'll give you an actual better end result so there are two two answers 
answers to that, uh, you know, without question. A couple of things on our, our webinar series, and we're always posting this, and make sure you're checking our website because it's constantly changing week after week. I know every time I go on it, there's something new and something different and a new, new spot there. So again it's all about education we have our whole team engaged with website development putting in our articles of our from our from our employees and uh, and our end users and things like that and you'll see a whole tab across the top of our where the red circle is of where our webinars are where the blogs are where the videos are news and events and things like that and you owe it really to yourself to to go back uh, i mean we've got about 45 of these videos we've done since last march on here uh, that you can see there's a whole array of them there. So how do we train people today? Obviously, we cannot be in your facility, hands-on, uh, sort of room to room. That's very difficult. Virtual is the way to go, and that's why we are dedicated to our virtual webinar series. So you can see I could go on and on and on page-wise, but there's very good instructional webinars here, uh, really, that allow you to lower the risk of an outbreak and, and provide clean, safe spaces in your facility. So, so with that being said, that's today's opening what I really want to do now is we're, we're going to continue with these two most uh, you know popular questions and inquiries um, you know there's serious interest around employee wellness and the eagerness to improve uh, you know so let's get right into that a reminder before we do that on Wednesday June 16th that's our next uh, webinar here and uh, and we'll uh, we'll advertise exactly what that uh, that topic is going to be there but it will do it will have to do with lowering the risk of an outbreak without question and uh, and so any new innovative things. We have some uh, really good and uh, nice announcements to tell you on the 16th of June that we're very proud of that will actually help you uh, with training and learning and things like that. So now we want to get into really what's the right way and what's the wrong way to clean and disinfect with Ask With William. So uh, let's uh, stay tuned. We'll have him up here in about uh, 10 seconds and uh, thanks for joining today. Thank you. Well, ask with Wednesday, April the 12th, 2021. What do you think? Amazing. <laughs> it's been 14 months since we've been doing this thing, Jim. 14 months tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Wow. And if you remember, I said, we only need you for one or two sessions. I know. You remember that? I know. But now you were camera shy and now you're right into the camera, it seems like. I have a hard time getting airtime, actually, now that you're getting much more comfortable, you know. I think you know, I think you know better. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So staying safe. We've got the long weekend coming up. How's your vaccine? Did you get your vaccine? I got my shot. Good. Yeah. Good. And Any you? side effects? No side effects. No, nothing. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Hairs may be a little grayer. I'm not. I'm not quite well, sure if that's a side effect. Well, or not. no, no. That we can't blame it on that. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. That's that's my <laughs> excuse. That's for sure. No, we we had my mm -hmm. wife and I had our shot too. Yeah. And, uh, uh, last month, actually, mm -hmm. and we're down for our second shot, uh, April, or sorry, April. August the 12th. Uh, it was April 21st we yeah, had our shot. Yeah. August the 12th, we're getting the second one. We've got the Pfizer one. And uh, I mean, I, I, honest to God, I was in the car and I and went in, processed, shot, waited mm -hmm. my 15 minutes, you know, just to make mm -hmm. sure there was no instant reaction. Went back to the car and it was 38 minutes. Sorry, 28 minutes is what it was. So the excuse of not having the time to get the vaccine, I mean, it's 28 minutes. I know. Right? Really? You know, so. So go out and get your vaccine. Yeah, that's uh, excellent uh, advice. Yep. I mean, follow the science, mm -hmm. uh, follow the science. behind it and the, and yep. the health professionals mm -hmm. and away you go there. So, so that's good. Things are moving along there. I had no side effects whatsoever. Good. And good. you just feel better mentally, I believe, that you, yes. Just, yes. you just feel a little bit mm -hmm. safer. You know, mm -hmm. and, and our mission here now is to, to make sure that we, we transfer the education and teach our customers to clean properly and disinfect properly. And that's what today's session's about. As you know, we've been really talking about uh, proper protocol and the five critical elements mm -hmm. of disinfect mm -hmm. and security. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're aware, I mean, you see all the questions that come in. I mean, they're say, really saying what's the right way and what's the mm -hmm. wrong way to disinfect. And right. and uh, we sort of talked about that in the, in the PowerPoint portion, but I thought, well, we'll just sort of maybe explain, take a few okay. methods and explain at the board. Okay. So, okay. so why don't we get right into that where, I'll go up and I'll be I'll be the model. Okay, okay. not a very okay. nice model, but I'll be the model. And and I think what you do is I, I'm going to sort of do some cleaning there, and you tell me whether it's right or wrong. 
Okay, okay. Well, we can so you, play that game. We yeah, so you can be today. the teacher there. So okay, that will we'll be a so, switch. Okay, exactly. Right, <laughs> you know. So I've got my disinfectant. Mm -hmm. Okay, is what I've got, and you you can see I've got it totally well, marked uh, disinfectant well, spray well, and well, wipe well, well, and well, well. wear gloves. Okay, let's wait a minute. Wait. We, what I'm off to a bad start already? Absolutely. Well, I haven't even started. Why are you bad? Bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Where's well, the workplace well, label? Well, it, I don't. Well, that, that's it, isn't it? No. That's not it? No. You gotta have a proper workplace label, Jimmy. Okay, well, uh, well, I'll get that. You'll get that? Yeah, I'll well, get, you that. get that. Put it on the bottle before you do that. Okay, so I really should do That's that. Number right? one. That's GHS and SDS compliance, you got right? It. Yes. Okay, so I'm not off to a good start. No. Okay, but my PPE, I've got wear gloves. And, and I'm wearing gloves. You're wearing, okay. And that's wrong too, but, but nonetheless, uh, how about your glasses? You're not, what you're, glasses? You've got extra I don't wear glasses. You, safety um, glasses. Oh, safety glasses. Yes. Well, where does it say? It only says to wear gloves. Well, well, again, if you had the proper <laughs> workplace label on that, so, so I'm wrong. Everything. Okay. And if you read the SDS, it would probably tell you everything too. Well, am I supposed to read the SDS? Of course. Really? Absolutely. Well, okay. Well, that's, that's essential. I mean, okay. we can touch again on the the five uh, essential, yeah. essential mm -hmm. um, uh, points here about um, cleaning. And okay. Well, geez, I haven't even sprayed anything, and I'm but, wrong but you're here. Wrong already. Well, okay, but okay. Well, just see if I can make it right. Okay. So, so I'm gonna just you know do this, and and I'm gonna spray and wipe, and and how's that? No dwell time. Well, no. Where no does free it? cleaning. Well, well no, who says I'm supposed to do that? Again, if you read the, the use directives, <laughs> you will know all that. You so that's important. That. That's very important. Okay. That's number one. Okay. Well, I, I thought I could come in with a cloth that would work okay, and and uh, and I could spray and wipe and whatever. Is there no. a, any other issues that I've got? Maybe. Well, well, uh, <laughs> there's number one, the cloth looked a little dirty before you even got started. Well, you, well I just came from the men's washroom. <laughs> is what I did. And, you know, because they don't give us a lot of them in housekeeping and they well, that's, tell us that's to no reuse good. them. That's, that's no good, Jimmy. That's no good. No. So I got to, so you, would, you is it to... fair to say this could be contaminated or something? <laughs> Just a tad. Just a tad. Just a tad. Okay. So obviously I failed, right? Miserably. I, I, I didn't do it the right Miserably. way. Miserably. <laughs> okay, well, okay, well, that was, that was, uh, I think I was set up on that one. Okay. okay. So, so this one, so now... Obviously, I've got a label on here. A label. Tells me what I d do. What I so I should put my goggles put on, my safety goggles. glasses, yeah, right? Safety glasses. Okay. Now, I don't know about my cloth. I mean... Well, well we're going to assume that the cloth is clean then. Okay. Or should we maybe even get... It, should we get a new cloth, maybe? maybe? New cloth. Okay. Well, maybe I can get a new cloth, as a matter of fact. So, okay. Well, how's this one? Okay. That looks clean. This one is brand new. Brand new. This one, as a matter of fact. Okay. So just mm -hmm. stick with me. Okay, and I'm gonna just, it is okay to spray like this and stuff and, and all over or? I, I assume you're gonna, you're gonna have a little dwell time, right? Well, no, I've gotta go to the next office. No, no I'm done. Good. That's still not good. What do you mean, what did I do wrong? Dwell time, dwell time. Well, what kind of dwell time? Well, you follow it on the label, it says five minutes, I bet you it says that on there. Uh, yeah, allow surfaces to remain moist for five minutes. Nah. Well, that was close enough. No. What was that? Four? Ten, ten seconds. Ten seconds. So, much. so you're saying I'm still doing it wrong? Absolutely. You got but I got my label, and I got my gloves, and I got Good. my goggles. Good. You got to, you got to, and you're using a, one. I tell you a couple of things you're using, Mike. That's a um, an EPA registered or DIN registered product. Yeah. So that's number one. You, yeah. That's that's very good. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Okay. Good. You didn't pre-clean. Well, th where does it say that? On the label. Well, is that one of the elements because I'm I, supposed I would, to do I, that? Yes, because I assume your writing, in fact, would have been basically um, pre representing soil. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I think you should have done that. Okay. okay. Yeah. But I've got my compliance here, mm -hmm. right? And I've got my goggles and I got my gloves. Mm -hmm. So I'm better than the yeah, first yeah. one, is yeah, what I'm. But I still but should, didn't. You should, should pre-clean a little bit there. I think that, that that's a step that was missing. Okay. Because I assume that was um, heavy, considered heavy, gross soils. Yeah, right? yeah. So you need to move that first. So this would become more efficacious. So then the advantage of removing that allows the disinfectant to work better? Mm -hmm. Or what is that? Well, exactly that. You, the disinfectants work a lot better 
if if you remove gross oil. Okay, okay. Because remember now, you have a set concentration here. And yeah. He's got to work harder to move to work on all that gross oil. It won't be as efficacious. Yeah. So there could be some uh, microbes or bacteria, viruses yes. hiding under some of the soils yes. where the where this doesn't come in contact. Exactly. Okay. Well, we're learning. We're learning. So so. But I did have improvement. Yes. Right. Improved, oh, okay. Improved, okay. Yes. So then we take uh, our uh, our uh, sprayer. Okay. And this is in no way representing the brand of the sprayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I see, uh, you know, people, you know, they just go through and, you know. All the commercials you see and everything, you just sort of go through with these things and spray, and then you, you walk away, right? So is that good enough? No, because you, a lot of the things that we didn't do before, we did not pre-clean. No, no, we didn't have a lot of dwell time. Well, uh, yeah, we didn't have okay. A lot of dwell time, but you didn't clean the surface. Okay, okay. And um, of course, um, you know, I've got issues, you know, if you follow the label claim, I don't think, um, uh, you know, that type of spray is recommended by the registrants on, on all. Okay, but it, it goes through fast and it sprays nice. It's, a, you know, in a, in a way I go, but... I don't think you're going to get the efficacy that you require to do proper disinfection. So, basically, what I, I failed again, you're saying, and I, I didn't follow the five critical elements. The five right? critical elements. Okay. It's... Uh, um, and okay. there's no label on the thing? There's well, no one face yeah. label? At least I didn't see one. Yeah, but I mixed it so I know what's in it. Yeah, so is that not good enough? What if I came about and uh, I just want Well, there is the sec the afternoon shift and the in the midnight exactly. shift, so they would just know that it's me and trust me, hopefully, yes, that it's sure. in there. Yeah, I would I think so. Know. But is that against the law? Yes, like that's course, yes, Okay, yes, okay. Yes. So but fast and, and whatever and I think I've got enough product all you over. Like that product, that, 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 well that it's easy to spray. Though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's but definitely it's easy to spray, but you know, it's uh, now if I look sort of in the oh, geez, I've got. <laughs> you see, it's running all over the place. Oh, 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 oh my goodness! Exactly. <laughs> I better uh, I better wipe this off. <laughs> Holy cow! I don't even know what actually. I for, sort of forgot what products in there now, but uh, you but see, uh, didn't label it. oh boy! Well, I I can tell. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that much uh, on the camera, but it looks pretty nasty. There's residual everywhere. Exactly. Oh boy. Exactly. Okay. So what I, what I could do, I mean, yeah, that residual is not good. No. And is that because I sprayed too much on there too probably? Much on there, yes. Okay. And then we've talked about ATP meters before. Yes. Okay, and we've talked about basically, uh, you know, if I <laughs> if I actually ran this, did the ATP swab, I'm sure my number's probably going to be pretty high, right? Very high. Yeah, and I know less than 30 with a hygiene model is is really where you want to aim. Exactly. The lower, the better, obviously. There, so so. Or even if you you know use the aftershock method as well, you can get a high. Well, you're right. Low, low value yeah. As well. That's actually, uh, I, you know, I got a little bit on my skin there, I think, is because uh, I was maybe going a little uh, too uh, rambunctious with the sprayer. Yeah. yeah, and it happens to a lot of, a lot of uh, custodians, have that, that's a problem. Okay, okay, well, that's good. Uh, that, that's good. And then I've got, I've got my, my pump-up sprayer, which we've always mm -hmm. talked about. Okay. okay so th look, th look at the difference here. You've got a beautiful... Uh, workplace, workplace label. label. Yeah. Okay, you just basically pump this up, and then I just, where I go. I can apply that, okay. Then I put a fine mist on there. Then I've folded my cloth over, just mm -hmm. basically. And then I take and do what I would call a pre-clean, okay. I'm just gonna give it a, a little bit extra wipe because there was some heavy soils and residual on there. Okay, mm -hmm. and so how's that so far? That's good. That's your pre-clean step. Yep, that's my pre-clean. So as you that's can see, good. I've got nothing else that's on the board good. here now. Okay, so what do I need to do now then? I, I go, go back to this? Hell no. No? Sorry, I shouldn't say hell oh. no. But, but no, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. okay, well, I can tell you're passionate about that. <laughs> so I can go back to the same, the, the same method, mm -hmm. right? So I've pre-cleaned, okay? Uh, for the sake of the camera, we've respected the dwell time, That's which right. is five minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes, five minutes. Okay. In the case of this, it would be five minutes. Again on the label. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, I'm going to do a fine mist. And now what? You, well, that's going to be your dwell time. You know, 
just for the sake of the camera. So five minutes for the sake of the camera. Yeah, yeah. Now what do I need then to do? Then you wipe. And give it a little wipe? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I've got my five yeah. minutes. Yeah. We're cheating the camera. Yeah. Okay, or the clock, I guess mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. Okay, like so. I've got that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now what? No, if it's a food contact surface. Yes. Then I would you know, you rinse with a potable water. Do a potable water rinse. Yeah. Okay. And that's just taking a microfiber cloth. Okay, mm -hmm. in an actual bucket, mm -hmm. wringing it out and just doing yes. it a, a yes. white, and then I'm done. You're done. So I've got it all done. You've got it all done. And I have to do that all the time? If you want to have a proper environment to work and live in. Yes. So when I do it this way, so if I follow, I'm using the right product that's registered, mm -hmm. okay, I've diluted it properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's a question that we get from our audience all the time. Um, we've talked about PPM paper, mm -hmm. okay where your disinfectant, whatever it calls for, making sure you do the litmus paper test, mm -hmm. so we do that. Mm -hmm. Still people struggle with that, but they'll get used to it as they go along, and that's mm -hmm. in some of our other webinars. Mm -hmm. But then what we also have is we've got our Charlotte Serve Clean, okay, portion aid, mm -hmm. which uh, if I want to have two ounces or 100 milliliters or whatever it is, this basically threads, I don't know if you've seen this one before because oh, it's yeah. new, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, branding there and you basically take like so okay fill to the desired level say whatever it is okay and then pour that in the bucket now that's a pretty neat idea that's, that's probably about five dollars or something what do you think of that and that's good idea that's yeah. accuracy in your hands actually. but if so so say I'll ask you this question mm -hmm. speaking of right way and wrong way so if my instructions clearly add ask for this amount okay I'm disinfecting so I want to put this amount in, no, yes. right or wrong? In this case, more is not better. And why is that? Because well, I'm killing things, so I want to be safer. No, because you're going to do a couple of things, you know, that's, that's not called for. Number one, you're wasting money. Okay, well, I get that. Yeah, number two, it's not required because... But I'm killing things I want to no, save for my employees. Safe. But, here, but here's a story. You've got a certain percentage of, uh, of active ingredients within that bottle. The use directives are A, stated by law, that you should really follow that stuff. And you'll know that by reading the instructions on the label, number mm -hmm. one. That's mm -hmm. another good reason for reading the label. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now the label, is it, is, it, uh, uh, is it English? What if I'm French? What if I'm Spanish it's, it's, or whatever? It's trilingual. English, trilingual. French, also okay. French. All Enviro is. Yes. Good. So Excellent. Go there, so. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. So that's good because then they don't have an excuse. No excuse. Right. Okay. No, good. Just, it's all laid out there for you. Yeah. So I've mixed way too much product. Way too much. You're wasting I know I'm going to spend you're way more have, money. You have a residual on there. You won't get the proper uh, efficacy. It, it's just wrong all the way across. And it, it's all calculated uh, to get the right amount of um, concentration to do the job uh, yeah. at hand. And that's what your team does, that's right? They, you, you're all your people in the lab, they yeah. actually you know, spend all mm -hmm. kinds of money actually doing that. Mm -hmm. so, so if I leave a residual on here then, is there a risk there of something happening wrong if I leave a residual on a surface, other than visual? Of course. I'm gonna because take my glasses off because I'm done, done yeah, with yeah, the thing there. The yeah, they're sort of fogging a little bit as a matter of fact. <laughs> but so if I have a little bit of a residual, what, what impact is that? What, tell me why that's wrong. Well, number one, uh, you get, uh, you can get resoiling a lot faster, which then grows more bacteria. And then you've got mutation of these bacteria and et cetera, et cetera. So it's just wrong all around and you're not doing anything else. So fair to say it's a host? surface yeah, then? Yes. I've got a food source there maybe of some a, sort for that. bacteria yeah. and viruses to grow. Yeah. Okay, so mixing it, it yeah, and if I, if I look at it and say, geez, you know, you're right because I filled it twice as full. You know, now imagine if I was an education facility that used 50 cases a year, I would innocently be forcing them to buy 100 cases a year, Not wouldn't I? Yeah, w with a health and safety risk on top. Of course. Yeah, and sustainability and residual and, and, and the whole works. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So dilution control, actually beside it, we've got our tried and proven dilution control system, which is basically aim the hose and, and fill the containers and they're all color coded and things. We have our portion aids, right? We have, 
you know, our, our portable dilution devices that hook to a water source and then aim the hose and push the button and away you go. Okay. We've got our PPM paper, mm -hmm. right, which we need to test. And mm -hmm. here's a question. I've filled my solution with disinfectant here at 8 in the morning when my shift started. When do I have to check it again? What's the right way and the well, wrong I, way there? You know, it depends whether or not you use the product. If it just you just did it at the start of the shift, you did not use it. No, I used it. I, I start every day at 8 and what? I go through my patient's rooms there. How, how often is this good for my whole shift or how often do I need no, to change no, it? No, not at all. You know, you, once if the, the bucket looks visibly soiled, I think you should just change it. So if it's murky? If it's murky, just uh, change it. So that could happen in my first room. Change it. Okay. And then how often should I be checking well, I, this? I would check that once I, um, once I did my first mix and then uh, move along from there. Okay. And then after so many rooms are visual, I should yeah, check sure, this, yeah. a fair to say, three or four times throughout my shift or oh, yes. even more, depending oh, yes. if it's murky? As often, as often as you can. Yeah. Once it's murky, I say get rid of it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So the right way is constantly check. That's constantly what you're saying. Check. Okay. Constantly right check. way because, is proper dilution. Yeah, because you want to ensure that you've got proper concentration in the bucket. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so really summarizing, the right way is obviously always comes back to our five critical elements of disinfectant security, which is use a registered product for the country that you're in. Number one. Okay, number one. Read and understand the label. Number two, okay, I went a little wrong there maybe today is what I did. Then I've got to dilute properly. Okay. If necessary. If necessary. Yes. So this ES15, our number one seller, is a ready to use. Okay. Right. But obviously ES364 is one to 64 there. And uh, obviously this could help me. Is it, is it is safe to, if once I establish maybe it's two ounces or a hundred milliliters or whatever it is, I could do a Sharpie just as a visual. So my people mixing it would know. I think that would help. There. Yeah. That would help. Just a visual a, is help. what it would be. Yeah. Okay. Because so you're also going to use your parts per million quant solution um, paper to verify that in fact you had the right yeah. concentration. And it's not wrong checking more, right? No, Validating, no. measuring. Yeah, okay. So I've, twice, cut once. Yeah, so I've got my product, the whole works. My next one is to pre-clean surfaces, mm -hmm. which I thought I was doing, but obviously I wasn't doing that right, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I guess you could even add in there pre-clean. You could add in pre-clean with a clean microfiber cloth or whatever it is you were using. That's I guess cool. I was going wrong. Yes. I came from the men's washroom, so. That's just wrong. Yeah, I guess, yeah, thinking yeah. of that, that's wrong, you should okay? Use color -coded uh, color code, yeah, well, yeah. Yep. So hey, you know this one. This color is for the washroom. This color is for the kitchen. This color is for the yep. office. Okay. So then I've got to allow it to respect the dwell time. So in this case, it's five minutes. So we did that as a time elapsed thing That's for correct. the video yes. today. Is what we did, mm -hmm. and then a potable water rinse. That's a lot of different elements involved. But that's the way to do it. But that's, that's the right way. way that is that the is right, right way. way. Okay, okay. Well, that's, uh, that's good. You know, what I wanted to do is typically, one of our most popular inquiries, as you know, is really people saying, do I have to follow all these rules on the label? You know, do I have to read the label? Do I have to do these things? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do, without doubt. So we had a, I thought we'd stage it a little bit here and really show people the right and the wrong way. Um, I don't think I'm the only one that would do no, it the wrong get, way. We get questions like that all the time. Yeah, day. for sure. Yeah. So that well, was a good demo, by the way. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, I thought I was doing a few things right and obviously you told me I was doing them wrong. <laughs> so I don't know what's wrong with that, as, as a matter of fact, ask with. But, uh, but yeah, we do have some good detergents and things to clean yeah. this type yeah. of uh, sub this microfiber substrate there as well so okay well that's good well any other pointers for today I think we're just about out of time there and uh, we've fielded all of our questions in the right way and the wrong way mm -hmm. is there any other pointers or anything well, you know, the closing comments thing. closing comments go to get your vaccine yes absolutely we did it it's yes fine. we did mm -hmm. okay. you know and we want to enjoy summer okay. yes you know, yes, we do. The long weekend's yeah, coming. Of course, of course uh, <laughs> continue to do the things we always say. Yeah. Wash your hands. Yeah. Social distancing. And wear your mask when you can't do Yeah, so. for sure. Well, that's good. Well, our next uh, webinar is, uh, when is it? Is it June the uh, 16th? I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, we have some exciting news to share then ab yeah, about yeah. Uh, and it's all about helping our customers mm -hmm. um, with uh, with training and knowledge like this as a matter of fact so some good exciting news that way 
Um, there's, as you know, there's a couple of new innovative products coming along in the summer, mm -hmm. um, which we're going to be, I know me from the sales side, I'm just can't wait to get a hold of. Uh, but of course, I can't say anything now, but just, the lab, yeah, you're going to have to. But I mean, you know, really resting on our values that we bring to our partners. I mean, knowing what's going on in the industry, listening to our customers, you know, designing those innovative products and then really transferring that knowledge is our key strength there. So, and you're a big part of that as well and the whole entire team there. So thank you very much, uh, um, you know, for participating. Stay safe, everybody there. As Asquith says, uh, get your vaccine. It's, it would be great and, uh, and stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.